Welcome back to FIN24. In studio with us, we have Dennis George, who is the Secretary General of FIDUSA. Welcome so much to FIN24, Dennis. Good evening. Dennis, what are your thoughts on Budget 2017? Look, we have a budget that has been presented in a very difficult financial situation. Um, we see the global economy. We're facing a low growth trajectory. South Africa is even in a lower trajectory. Um, any country that wants to move forward has to have at least a uh, potential growth of about 5%. And those are all things that need to be acknowledged yes. uh, to put co give context to this budget. Yes, and we find ourselves trying to climb out of a dark big hole. And uh, lucky for us, there is a, a little bit of space that the Minister have announced to strengthen the budget going forward, like for instance that he wants to introduce a 45% tax bracket for people earning more than 1.5 million rand. You know, that will help the fiscus mm -hmm. because the budget is always about income versus expenses equals to surplus or deficit. And uh, that 30 billion rand surplus, you know, has to be made up because in the past, you know, government could uh, depend on SARS being able to collect more revenue. But, you know, things are very difficult because mm. the growth is low. And, and that put an extra burden, you know, on government to stress on the expenditure side that government departments have to spend the money wisely. Yes. They also have to spend the money in such a way, you know, that we cut wasteful expenditure out. And, and, and that put a lot of pressure on government departments because we, nobody likes to be put under pressure like that. But unfortunately, that is a reality that we need yeah, to face. Yeah, that is a reality, that if we cut wasteful expenditure, we will have more money that we can be spending on basic necessities. Um, if we look at something like the minimum wage, which was something which was touched on and looked at by Minister Pravin Gordon, what are your thoughts on that? Look, I think, you know, this is a serious big step that the social part has negotiated. We started to talk about two years ago with Deputy President Ramaphosa in NETLAC, where business, labor, and government came together. Now, for the first time in the labor market, the social partners have agreed that there will be a minimum wages and that employers can no longer take advantage of the people right at the bottom because they are vulnerable and, and they are desperate. And employers take advantage of the most vulnerable in yes. the most desperate of times. And we've seen that happen through generations time and time again. But you must look at the impact we're looking at 4.5 million people mm -hmm. that earn less than 3,500 rand per month. So if a person earns 2,500, it means it's going to get 1,000 and more. Yes. For a person like you and me, it might not mean a lot of money. But, but for in the four, greater scheme of things, yeah. For 4 million people, that's going to make a difference. Yes. Um, there was a lot of concern expressed about what is going to be the job losses. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is this, the way that we design the minimum wages, we're going to minimize the job losses. So if a firm can't pay the minimum wages, you know, there's a way that they have to apply for an exemption. And then government can most probably come in to see how they can top up, not towards the employer side, but to make sure that the worker at least take the minimum wages home. So it's not all doom and gloom from the employer side because something that often comes up is if we raise the minimum wage and if we stick to a minimum wage, there's going to be job losses. And you're saying that's not something that is no, no, really no, we a concern? No, no, no. especially an exemption clause where a company can come and say, look, this is my books. I can't afford to pay. And then we work on the exemption based on 12 months and so forth. Because we, th those are things that is reality, it's not ideology. And, but the important thing is that there is a commitment from the social partners to make sure that we are going to look at the most vulnerable people in our society to protect them. But secondly, the minimum wages is also a, two, uh, a sword with two edges. On the one side, yeah. it's the cost for a company, but on the other side, it's a demand a stimulator because that people that earns the minimum wages and the more money they earn at the bottom, they can spend and that will create the additional demand in the economy and that could help us to generate more inclusive economic growth. What can we as South Africans do to support Minister Gordon's budget? Look, I think, you know, from a point of view, is the most important and the best policy that can be implemented is the policy of job creation. Because job creation, number one, it does the first thing that it does, it puts money in the pockets of households. 
the households will then be able to spend the money in the economy. And that helps to stimulate the economy. And then thirdly, it helps people's self-esteem. You yes. know when a person has a job, it does. and when you have a decent job, you feel proud of yourself, you feel you contribute yeah. to the economy. But remember the person don't just only produce money for the family and for the household, mm -hmm. he also contribute towards the fiscus. Because yes. every month the employer will deduct the money from that person's salary in the form of tax, and they will pay the money over to SARS. That has a further effect that the government has to borrow less. So job creation is one of the best policies. And to add to that, business and labor and government are working on a special program where we want to place one million young people over a period of three years, especially those young people that don't have workplace experience. And we're asking companies to open up the doors to give young people opportunity, at least for 12 months, to get the opportunity to gain in workplace terms of experience. Internships? It's a kind of an internship, but it has to be coupled with on-the-job training. Do you ultimately think that this was a good budget? Look, the budget under the circumstances was tough. Yeah. Um, you could imagine government had a 30 billion rand shortfall, and so therefore the government had to introduce some measures mm -hmm. where they decided to increase you know, the tax rate and that will generate the money. You know, it could have been worse. Government could have most probably said they want to increase money on VAT. And that would have been quite a regressive step. Um, so under the circumstances, it was difficult, but I think it is a fair budget. Thank you so much for coming in. And we'll keep in touch with you and hopefully we'll get you in again to give some very, very insightful inputs. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.